Joining me here on the TRS podcast line is Clint Lowry. What's going on, brother? How how you doing? Welcome back to the show, man. Thanks, man. It's good to be back. Yeah, man. I'm just excited about everything and ready to get rolling, man. Yeah, man. This I mean, you, this time of year is always cool anyway, you know, because the holidays are coming. You know, you get to spend time with, with family and friends and stuff, and then uh, you know, couple that with you know your uh, solo debut coming out uh, January the 31st, I believe, as well. And then you're going to be on tour with Alter Bridge. So 2020 is is shaping up to be uh, another big year for you, man. So, uh, I, I guess we'll start there. I know you, you guys in seven dust are doing your, uh, your holiday thing, uh, in Atlanta, I believe, right. You guys are just doing some acoustic shows and stuff to kind of close out the year. Yeah, we're doing like three final acoustic shows. <clears throat> One's in Athens actually, and, um, two are in Florida and then that'll be it for the seven dust cycle for a second. Yeah. Right on, man. You know, I, I've, I've had the chance to, to see you guys do the acoustic show here in Nashville, gosh, I guess maybe it's only been five years ago, which is crazy to think about now. But uh, so anyone who's going to get a chance to see those those acoustic shows, do not miss those if you're in those areas. Those are always a, a real treat, man. I know you guys enjoyed, you know, kind of doing a different spin on some of those tunes as well. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a side of the band that we like to <laughs> showcase from time to time, and um, definitely something that a lot of heavy bands can't get away with. So we, we enjoy doing it. What's well, so one thing you guys, you know, the harmonies, you know, and the vocals has always been something I, I think a lot of people um, really enjoy about Seven Dust. So, you know, like I said, you know, anybody who's in those areas definitely do not miss those acoustic shows, man. But uh, circling back around, obviously, you know, God bless the Renegades uh, again coming out January the thirty first. Uh, talk to me about you know, is this been kind of a long time coming for you as far as doing like a solo album? Is this something you've been wanting to do, and it's just kind of a timing thing? Like the timing was just right to do it. Yeah, it's all of that stuff you just mentioned. I mean, you know, I've, I've been wanting to do it. I've done variations of it before with the Call Me No One thing and right. the Hell of Demons Meet Skeletons, which was initially an acoustic thing that turned into an electric thing. So it's been like happening, but not never under just my name and with just me uh, as the main artist, you know, involved, you know. So it's it's been one of those things where the timing, um, I needed to work. I need to really, uh, you know, organizing it, getting it in between seven of stuff, uh, and all their family just trying to be home and you, and you, and actually have breaks. Right. It was, uh, it, I know this is going to be a demanding year. I think that just establishing my name out there is going to take a little bit of work, but once it's out there to be a cool thing to, to have this outlet will help me, uh, just be a, you know, help me creatively help me be a better member of seven Dust. help me just be a better overall, um, just happier, I think. Yeah, I, I get that, man. Also, you're transitioning to, to being in the in the front, too. I mean, obviously, you've done that you know, with other variations and in, in projects and stuff, but was there any uh, adjustment for you, you know, just kind of stepping out? Is there – is it like a – is it like a nervous thing? Or is it like, you know, any re- reservations about yeah. doing it or, you know? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, it, it's <clears> – the little bit of exposure that I have had to do it, it it's a whole different art form. I mean, there's – you know, getting in the studio and singing songs is one thing, but playing them live and and having the endurance to sing all through the set without, you know, you know, in the studio you're doing one song at a time. Here right. live, you're doing all of them in a row. So it's 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 something that I'm, I'm a cha- It will be a challenge, and I, I'll, I'm definitely ready to to do it. Um, so yeah, it's in the nervous energy, but I think that once I get out there and have more experience doing it, it's going to be something that I really enjoy and fall in love with. And, it's definitely one of those things that if I didn't do it, I would regret it for the rest of my life. And it's going to be, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be hard to do. Well, I think you're definitely going to be up for it, man. I'm looking forward to that. That tour kicks off uh, early February in Nashville, Tennessee at the War Memorial Auditorium, which is one of my favorite venues here in town, just for the historical factor alone. And, and obviously, you know, Nashville is always a great place to play. You're no stranger to that. But uh, how did the thing come along? Obviously, you worked with um, with uh, Michael Elvis, you know, who worked with Alter Bridge. Is that kind of how it kind of came together as far as you uh, opening up for them? Now that the relationships have been there for many years, I've, I've known Alter Bridge and all the guys for many years, over 15, 20, and maybe, I don't even know. But so there's that relationship's there. We have the same management team. We have a lot of parallels. We work with the same producers. So there's been this thing uh, under the same umbrella that we've kind of been under. So it made a lot of sense to go out with them. Uh, they're a great group of guys, and I think musically it makes sense more over the, the friendships. I think it's a really good mix of. I think I can really uh, be a good 
you know, artists to warm up the crowd for those guys, yeah. you know. And I think it's going to be a good vibe all, all, all around. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to catching that show when you guys come through town here early February, man. Uh, but the first single off, off the album was King's uh, really cool video, and I think it's kind of a a good introduction as far as what you're going to sound, you know, obviously you'll sound like for, for people who are I'm like, oh, well, what's what's Clint Solo sound like? And then you had the um, the, the self-titled uh, release, God Bless the Renegades, with the kids on the skateboards with the smoke bombs. So that looks like a, it was a fantastic video to shoot, man. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, one, you know, selecting that song and, and two, recording that video, man. Well, I mean, it was cool because, um, you know, like you said, it's an education process, you know, like what is it going to sound like? And I thought the Kings was overall an easy song to digest. It has pretty much all the elements of the record in it, you know, so it's, it was important to have the first song be a song that could represent what the record is like. And then the God Bless the Renegades, I was going to be in that video, but then I was, like it, you know, the director was like, it might be cool just to have these kids kind of skating around city, the city of Los Angeles, just just to kind of give a be symbolic of what the song means, and, and it was kind of neat. The next video I'll be in a lot, so I, I I thought it was cool to kind of be missing for one. But Kings was cool. I got to be my wife was the extra, in it, and then nice. it was just a cool vibe. And introducing the band, the, the members that are going to be playing with me, and it's a cool thing, man. Now, did, did you get a chance to, to jump on a skateboard at all? Um, you, you tested out. I don't know if you, you skateboarded as a youth or not. Did you get a chance? Um, like, yeah, I could still no, do some I, some rails or something, you know? No, I wish, man. I was always I was always around that culture, but I never did it because I was a musician. I was always, you know, scared I was going to break my wrist or whatever. But, <laughs> I mean, I haven't been on a skateboard in many years. I mean, if I did, it'd take a little bit of practicing. But, man, I always loved it and always thought it was cool, but. Yeah, that, that I always left that up to my buddies who were really true skateboarders, you know. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah. If I got a, if I got a skateboard, you'd see me in a sling the next day. It's probably how that would work out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was I was around that too, and I'm like, man, I was like, I wish I could do that. I was like, I, I'm a, I was a, I'm a big dude, so I'm like, I'll be on the basketball court, man. I'll catch up with you guys, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, certainly. Now, uh, with the record, was there stuff like you know? Is, are some of these songs stuff that you maybe you've been sitting on for a long time? Like, man, I, I really want to do this. I really want to do this. And you know, I have it written. I, I know what I want to do in the studio. It's just, you know, was there any songs on this album when it comes out that you were like, man, I've had this song in my pocket for a long time. I'm glad I finally got to record it. Yeah, I knew stylistically what there were songs that I wanted to do that I had not written yet, but I knew like some directions I wanted to go. But um, I, I signed on these songs. There was a lot of songs written for this. There's a, probably another two records that I could have done that very alternative, very different. But we ended up going with the more rock side of the things that I wrote. Uh, I think Elvis was a big factor in that and <clears throat> picking the songs. And so, yeah, it was. Um, it, some of the songs are older. Some of the some of them I wrote right before I went in the studio. Over, but it was the, over the course of two years that those songs, all the songs, were written for that record. Wow, I mean, yeah. So this is, you know, obviously a long process. I think sometimes people f you'll feel to realize the the process that goes into it. You got the songs, yeah, the idea of the song, and then writing, and recording, you know, packaging it, putting it together, you know, editing it, finalizing it, and there's, you know, you, some of these songs have probably been recorded for a long time. And then there's the waiting process. I mean, we're still, you know, it's December 9th, I think, right now, and the album doesn't come out until you know January 31st. So there's this long you know, period. So getting those singles out to kind of people to digest, has anyone, you know, come out to you lately? I know you've toured with, you know, seven dust and corn and, you know, tons of people. Has any, any of your peers come out and been like, Oh man, this is fantastic, dude. Have you even reached out to you? Yeah. There's been a bunch of guys in different bands that relationship about over the years that send me a quick little text. Dude, the song's killer, man. The yeah. voice sounds good. Or that riff is awesome or whatever, you know, just, um, that, that, support you get from your peers is important um it's you know guys and girls that i respect in the industry that hit me up and and give me their like little seal of approval man it means a lot you know especially with some people that i just really look up to and and, and appreciate their work so to be recognized by any of my peers is, is always just this thing where it's just a, it's a warm fuzzy feeling you know when when you move the needle for somebody that you look up to oh yeah man well uh clint you know i you're one of the people that I, I've enjoyed, you know, speaking with over the years that I've been doing the, the podcast, man. And I always appreciate you cutting time out, whether it was, you know, at the basement of some building, you know, at Seven Dust in Nashville or, you know, over the phone doing something, man. So I, I've always, you know, 
humbled it, yeah, that you come back and, and talk with me, man. I really do. Um, for you, I mean, you, you know, you've been in the industry, you know, you know, 20 you know, years or plus, you know, I imagine it's probably weird to hear me say that, but, you know, working with all the bands you've worked with, you know, Grammy nominations, all that stuff. Is there any moments that stick out to you musically as some of your, like your top moments where you're, you know, on stage or on the tours and you kind of look around and go, ah, oh, man, this, this moment right here is what it's all about. Yeah. I mean, there, there's definitely been special shows, um, things that have happened throughout the shows. There's been thousands of them, you know, um, every now and then it can be, um, a, a unlikely situation where we, we were doing, you know, you do small little VIP acoustic things where there's like 10 people and you're all singing and then they take over the vocals or, you know, they all start singing and, you know, their, their eyes are closing and you're looking around and you're like, man, I wrote this song on the, you know, the, in my bedroom and, right. and now these people are singing it. So there's these, these spiritual awakens, awakenings is what I call them. And I, just out of nowhere, you'll just look around and you're like, you know, and especially in sobriety, I've look, I, I used to never do that when I would, when I was partying a lot, I would just be kind of phased out and just all into it. Now I'll take those moments and I just look around, I soak it in. And it happens to big shows, the little shows, it, it happens a lot, you know? So, yeah, um, yeah I, I, it's, it's always cool. I mean, there's no specific, but there's a lot, there's been a lot. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause like, you know, obviously, you know, you know, I, nothing against anyone who, you know, wants to go, you know, party and stuff cool right on you know but you know obviously moderation is key there a lot of times but you know i find myself even that shows you know as, as a photographer i'm looking around and i'll just like you know put the camera and just kind of look around and you see like you know someone in the crowd who is you know just completely engulfed into what's happening on stage and it just makes you smile like you know the power of, of music and how it can bring people together and connect on so many different levels uh, across the spectrum regardless of what style or what you're listening to it's just though sometimes it's just important to take those moments in and you know, you kind of engulf yourself in and like, wow, this, this is really, really fantastic. And I appreciate you sharing a little bit of background there with that. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right, man. It is, it is a special thing to be able to do that. It's the ultimate uh, payoff for all the work and all the sacrifice that comes along with it. Oh yeah, man. Well, Clint, uh, I'm gonna let you run here, man. I, like I said, I like to keep the interview short and sweet, man. I, again, uh, thank you for always, you know, being willing to, to come back here and, uh, you know, rap with me a little bit for, you know, for, uh, whatever project you got going on. I always support you guys. I always tell people they, you know, people always, hey, I mean, what's the, the coolest band or some of the nicest people you've met And seven dust is always at the top of my list, man. You guys are fantastic individuals and, uh, you guys are always willing to, to help out. And, uh, man, you guys always put on one hell of a show too. Oh, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. I'm glad to know you all over these years, and I appreciate what you're uh, getting the word out for us. I do. My, my pleasure, man. Clint, uh, I'll catch you um, in Nashville here in February, man. Uh, dude, best to you and your family. Have a fantastic Christmas, man, and I'll catch you around the way, brother. All right, brother. Be good, man. Right on. It is uh, Clint Lowry uh, here on Revelator.